Medical school admissions can seem like a black box. Your application goes in, and it comes out the other end with an acceptance or rejection with very minimal feedback. Despite this, it's actually quite clear what medical schools are looking for in their applicants. Hey team, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny Klani. I'm a first year medical student in Canada. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a framework that medical schools across the world are using to assess the personal traits of their applicants. Medical schools use this framework to decide who has the personal traits that could make them an effective physician. I'll also share with you a notion template that I've made that's going to help you reflect on your personal experiences. Then you can use those personal experiences in your applications and interviews. The mysterious framework that I've alluded to is called the CanMeds framework, and it was created by the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Very generally, it's a collection of roles that doctors need to be able to fill. There are seven roles in the CanMeds framework, namely the communicator, collaborator, leader, health advocate, scholar, professional, and medical expert. While these roles are intended to describe what makes a good physician, they're also incredibly relevant to the entire career path in medicine. If you look at the University of Toronto Medical School's website, they have these things called clusters. Clusters are categories of attributes that they're looking for in applicants to their medical school. Specifically, the roles of the scholar, the professional, the communicator, the collaborator, and the health advocate are all directly found in the University of Toronto clusters as well as the CanMeds framework. Before you go off and look at the CanMeds framework, you should know that it needs to be interpreted differently depending on where you are in your career path. As a pre-med, you want to improve your effectiveness in these roles in situations outside of the healthcare setting. If you look at how the CanMeds roles are described, you'll see that they're described in a way that emphasizes the tasks of a practicing physician. I recommend doing some imaginative thinking of how these roles might be demonstrated in areas outside of the medical field. Later on, I'll give you an example of how these roles are relevant in your everyday life and how you can demonstrate them. Then as a medical student, you'll continue to work on developing your effectiveness in these CanMeds roles through the tasks involved in medical school. In Canadian medical schools, students are actually indirectly assessed based on these roles. In my medical school, we actually have a communications course where we're assessed based on how effectively we can communicate with patient actors. We go through tasks like taking a patient history and communicating a difficult diagnosis, all in the process of improving our ability to carry out the communicator role. Then as a doctor, these roles are the overarching competencies that you need to continue to develop as a part of lifelong learning. Many of these roles directly contribute to improving the quality of patient care and patient safety. Take for example, a physician that's seeing a patient who vapes frequently and the patient isn't aware of the risks of vaping. Immediately we have the role of the physician as a health advocate. And because vaping is quite new, the physician needs to be up to date on the latest findings related to the health risks of vaping. This is in itself the scholar role. The physician needs to communicate the risks to their patient in a way that maintains their positive therapeutic relationship while also acting as an advocate for their health. Then we have the medical expert aspect, which is inherent in this situation. In this one situation, the physician demonstrates four of the seven CanMeds roles which goes to show how relevant they are to the daily practice of medicine. In any single situation, it's possible to play multiple of these roles. I'll share with you an experience that I included on my application to medical school to drive this point further. Throughout my undergraduate degree, I was involved in research projects every single summer. And in the summer after my second year, I was working on a project looking at how various factors like drinking unpasteurized milk or eating uncooked meat could lead to contracting an infectious disease called zoonotic tuberculosis. If you're wondering, zoonotic is a word with Greek origins, and it essentially means that it's a disease that is transmitted from animals to humans. In this case, this is a type of tuberculosis, which is usually a respiratory infection, and this disease can be caught from cattle. Most cases of zoonotic tuberculosis occur in countries where pasteurizing milk is not a common practice. In some cases, this is due to cultural differences where there may be long-standing beliefs that pasteurization 
removes the pureness of the milk. Because most cases of this disease weren't local, it meant working with a microbiologist from Uganda. He was working on a laboratory study of this disease with my supervisor. Now my supervisor also has a very unique background, being a veterinarian and an epidemiologist that works with a medical school, where most of his colleagues were focused on human medicine and were oftentimes physicians. This created an interesting situation because I was able to be working with specialists from a variety of different disciplines. And this can be a difficult situation when people have different realms of expertise. And therefore, each person brings a different perspective on a topic. But I found that the best way to persevere in a situation like this was to explain my thought processes and how I got to different conclusions. And then whenever a misunderstanding arises, we would be able to patiently work through it. It also helps to have the humility to accept when you're wrong and use that as an opportunity to learn going forward. This collaborative effort also meant that I had my own domain of expertise which was creating the code that was going to analyze our data. This meant that I had to find ways to learn and problem solve on my own without the support of an expert or class. This aspect of my experience directly touches on the scholar role, where physicians are expected to independently learn and modify the way they practice as new information is learned about how we diagnose and treat different diseases. At the end, I finished analyzing our data and I decided to write a draft for a paper to get our study published, which goes to show how my efforts paid off with a tangible product. As I've hopefully illustrated, my experience working on this research project allowed me to develop some soft skills that will be directly translatable to the practice of medicine. Looking at the CanMeds roles, there's actually three that are relevant here, and that would be the collaborator, the communicator, and the scholar roles. If you're convinced that the CanMeds roles are an effective way of demonstrating your experiences in a way that is relevant to medical school admissions committees, then you might find this notion template that I've created to be useful. In the past few videos that I've done on interviews, and I'll link these videos in the description, I've mentioned how it's useful to generate a list of potential experiences that you could talk about in the right situation. This notion template is going to help you with that. I made this template as a way for you to record, write about, and categorize your activities in a way that's consistent with the CADMEDS framework. The link to the template is in the description if you wanna follow along, but just know that you will need a Notion account and that is free to make. Once you open the page and log into Notion, you should click on duplicate, which will import the template into your workspace. The first part of this template has links to all of the relevant pages of the CADMEDS framework. You can even browse the relevant pages inside of Notion or open it up in your web browser by clicking original. This makes these pages easily accessible for you to reference. And I think this should be super helpful when you're trying to figure out the relevancy of your experiences, especially when you're preparing an application or for your interview. The second part of this template is a table where you can list your experiences. I give a few examples here, like starting a club, research, and volunteering. Then you can categorize your experience within one or more CanMeds roles. To add an experience, you just need to click below the last column where it says new. The nice thing about Notion tables is that every row has a page associated with it. To access the page, you just need to hover over one of your experiences and click open page. Within this template, there's actually another template that you can use for the specific pages, which I call the star template. It's based on a framework for answering interview questions that breaks it down into situation, task, action, and result. The star framework should be helpful in guiding you to describe your experiences. I also recommend focusing your description on a very specific aspect of your experience. If we refer back to the example I gave on my research, I could have talked in generalities about how I did research during the summer over the course of several years and learned how to effectively evaluate a journal article. That would have fulfilled the scholar role. But it's far more impactful to talk about a specific situation like I did earlier. It could even be beneficial to be even more specific than I was, especially in an interview setting. Now back to the star template. With your specific example, you can break it down into four parts. The situation is the general setting in which your example takes place, and it includes the necessary contexts that someone might need to understand the story, especially if they don't know you. Next is your task, which is about what you wanted to accomplish 
and the challenges that were ahead of you. Then you have the action, which is exactly as it sounds. To finish things off, you should highlight the result and make it clear what you learned from the situation. If you were in an interview, you could cater the results portion to specifically answer the question that you were asked. Those were the essentials of how to use this template. I hope that you found this video helpful and please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me through any of the socials that I have linked in the description or leave a comment here. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.